Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I am here with the latest version of the Infinity Designer, which was just released for my Patreon supporters. Huge shout out to all the Patreon supporters who have covered me over the last two years diving through this game. Uh, could not have done it without them, would not have stayed as diligent on these projects without the support. So huge shout out to the Patreon supporters. As a thank you, I am releasing the early edition of the Infinity Designer uh, 0.2 over to you guys so that you can start testing and trying out the new tools. Uh, so it's been a pretty fun journey uh, getting all these systems hooked up and making sure that everything worked as expected. Uh, I'm really excited to announce that uh, I do have uh, everything set up to where it is building directly into the game. So at this time, uh, you can actually use the application and build these models immediately into the game and they are playable. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and do a quick how to use the tool uh, so that you can download download and start using it yourself. Uh, so this is still early edition. I have several features uh, lined up that I have not had a chance to implement yet, such as the ability to share uh, with the online community and download other people's creations, uh, along with actually being able to design uh, factions, new armor pieces, new weapons. Uh, that will be coming soon. Uh, but for now, let's go through actually creating a new player. So. First and foremost, this is early stage. Uh, please be aware that there are bugs in this. I've been working hard to try to rule out all the bugs and get this release out to you guys. Uh, if you encounter a bug, what I would recommend is just going ahead and closing the application and launching it again. Uh, as I mentioned, you know there are still some things, some edge cases, so please bear with me uh, as I'm ruling out and factoring for so much data. So the, the application's gotten rather extensive at this point, uh, and so it does take a while to do bug fix and make sure everything's running as expected. Let's go ahead and dive in. So let's go ahead and make our first pilgrim. So uh, over here on the left, so you have a couple of things. So first and foremost, you can switch between human uh, and infected. Uh, what that does is, so this is using dynamic binding. So everything is being bound to a skeleton the same way that the game is actually setting things up. Um, if you want to clear the slots at any time, you can hit this trash can down here at the bottom. That'll basically just unload all the data from these slots, uh, but let's stop. Let's start back at the top again. So you have human and infected. Uh, underneath that, you have the category. So if you want to be able to create a biter, you can select a biter that will set a biter skeleton that you cannot see. So that when you start bringing things in, it's actually mounting to the same point of the head of the biter. Um, you can load in presets. So if there's a preset, and I see that it just blew off into space. So that's a, I'm actually kind of glad that it did that uh, live because um, that shows again, there's some bugs in here, but essentially um, what that is, is the biter. That's where a skeleton uh, that it tried to load is not properly set up. So for example, we can go load uh, hopefully one of these other regular biters and it won't do that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's something specific with, uh, with one of those biters, but uh, I'm going to continue to edge case those out. But essentially, as you're going through and loading these in, so the presets are meant to try to get you as close as possible to the data that's currently in the game. Uh, so as I've been updating things, uh, I've gotten a lot closer to how it actually is in the game. Most of these things are going to set the custom decals and the different things on these guys. Um, and then there, there are edge cases where it's not able to find the immediate skin. So for example, with this head that it's set Clearly, this isn't the head that looks like a biter, but if you select this head and go in here, you can actually find it in the list. So I'm guessing it's one of these, uh, you know, and you can have this biter. Now, you'll also see an example of uh, some of these white textures. That's where I haven't had a chance to go and create all the material references for every one of these. Uh, what I did was set up some tools to where it was automatically creating these materials for a vast number of these, um, but there's definitely some edge cases and most of the time these sadly the edge cases are based around naming issues where they named uh, the actual texture file something completely different than the material there's no references to actually determine what the correct names are and so because of that it's one of those things I kind of have to do a guessing game to figure out uh, what exactly that one was supposed to be 
so let's continue downward. So you can play around with the presets and load in the different ones. Uh, hopefully that works out well for you guys. You know, as always, please let me know your feedback of, you know, what you run into. I think Biter is probably the big one that's going to have the skeleton issues. I think I did actually select uh, one of the skeletons that uh, has just been having some issues. Uh, for the most part, the other characters and everything seem to be loading in okay. Um, for each one of these, especially with the custom infected or special infected, make sure to clear the slots first. Uh, the reason for this and the reason I left this like this uh, was so that you could go in here and mix and match. Uh, I'm not forcing clearing the slots every time you load in a different preset. Um, and that is so that you can actually go in here and set different ones uh, and then mix and match in between. So let's actually switch back to humans. That's a much better use case. Um, so for example, when we go here and, here and we set this, and I just noticed that by doing that, the preset itself um, actually just got cleared. So again, little bugs. I'm sure if I relaunch, it'll be back in there. Um, but, and actually I'll go ahead and do that while we're talking. So uh, one of the things I would recommend is when you're trying to design a new character, uh, for now, while I'm continuing to iron out all the bugs, is essentially you can use any one of these different uh, presets to get you started. So for example, if you select a player, uh, the reason for this split is, is that half the materials and, uh, and models are set up with a culled uh, material that will always show through the different, there's like a transparent glitch um, and so because of that I've split out what is a player and what is a, a, a man woman child so that way when you're creating an NPC you actually can't put the imp the player materials uh, on the NPC characters without that happening as well so if you actually build an Aiden uh, player and turn him into a uh, into a character in the game so you see him in the world most of his stuff will show through buildings and different materials and you'll be able to glitch through um, and that's something they've done on the back end and it's one of the things that's caused issues with the new armors uh, for I am Legion so let's go ahead and dive in so for the player uh, if you want to get started for example if you want to load in a warden uh, again if you clear this out and then hit load again um, for some of these player models they've essentially just turned off the head so if you try to load in the different ones uh, without clearing it what it'll do is is that it will keep the slots that are not being used by the data so as you're loading in the different ones you'll actually be able to mix and match uh, which can actually be pretty fun uh, as well as is actually combining some of these different things so this guy got his beard um, but what this is really useful for is that right now we're on the all filter so right now you know this is going to be every single Single slot is generated and loaded up here at this uh, in this list. What you'll want to do is is basically if you want to start from scratch, uh, you can select something like the head, and then you can actually just go in here and roll uh, the dice here to get the different heads. Now these are going to be specific heads to the player models, uh, not everyone. Uh, and what I've set up right now is is that when you export, it's actually going to be using uh, the third person only. So this is not going to affect your first person view just yet uh, it's only going to affect your third person view uh, and I'm going to fix I'm going to continue down that road in the future to try to see what I can do to support first person as well uh, but for now this will be third person which is useful for multiplayer so all your friends should be able to see these different models as long as you've all sent each other the same files um, but we can switch over to man here and then press this uh, head again and you notice that we didn't change uh, this beard so this beard is actually a player beard and so that will actually stick on there so we can go in here and select any different head that we want actually I like that guy so if we want to use this guy's head uh, we can actually go in here as well and say lock so we can actually lock the different elements as well so if we lock that and hit reroll you can see here that you can very quickly load in the different hairs and the different uh, outfits uh, based on the slot that you've selected. So here's a sample hair that we have for this player. At any time, you can press the space bar and actually switch to lighting to kind of see what it'll look like inside the game. Um, and then also you can change the variations. So there's variations for every single uh, model pretty much. And with this version, you'll actually be able to create variations. So check this out. Um, so this is the first stage of it. If you hit this little tattoo button down here in the bottom left, it'll open up this panel 
And what this will do is, is it will allow you to edit the currently active slot. So whichever slot you've moved last, it's going to update this panel. So if we want, want to create, for example, a different variation for a head. So if we go here and if you close the slot, it'll go faster. It will jerk a little bit when you're trying to uh, load those different things with this panel open because it's doing a lot of work in the background. Um, so once you load this up, you can actually see all the different materials that are applied to this head. If you want to go in here and actually modify this, so we want to use this base and we want to use any one of these variations. So say we find a variation that we really like, but we want to change the eye color. So again, opening up that tattoo button, you can go in here to eyes green and say you actually want to use brown eyes. So you can go in here and set the different eye colors, uh, kind of however you want to set things. Uh, and then also the same is like, for example, if you want to go in here and set a different head texture or material, you can as well. So any different material can be applied to this guy um, pretty much in the game. I've tried to build out these lists to its, where it's only useful uh, data. There are definitely some edge cases in here. There's definitely not useful materials in these lists. So please be aware that when you open this up, for example, there's a bunch of materials here that shouldn't be there but probably one of the key ones that i've also added in there is the null material so you can actually turn off details on your models by setting it to null uh, and that comes in handy when you're going through and say you know when you're making a mask and you only want certain elements of that mask you can actually apply that very quickly uh, so let's go ahead and continue on with this guy let's give him some facial hair to match that we've added this uh, area there so there we go we'll give him some facial hair uh, uh, and right now it's got this material Carl beard. Uh, we can actually go in here and set like, for example, uh, dark black or yeah, we'll do something like that. So you notice that also this uh, model is kind of free-floating. Certain ones line up better uh, than others. Uh, probably what I would recommend is make sure to check it in the game. So don't really go by exactly what's in the editor with hair and facial hair because uh, I am binding it to the skeleton. But with certain mount points that are in this skull, uh, it may end up in a better position once you actually run the game. Uh, these might also have some um, blend mesh. Uh, set up with them as well to where they actually align with the face. I haven't gotten far enough in to know whether that's true or not, but I'm just recommending uh, to just all you have to do is export into the editor and see what you get. So say, for example, we've created this guy and we want to give him a uniform. So we want him to be a pilgrim to start with. So we're going to switch back to player because player is going to be the pilgrims unless you're going after spike. Um, and then let's go here to the torso. We'll actually go down here, and for this one, it's going to be Skeleton, I think, is going to be our current one for him. T player. I've tried to organize this list by name as well, but, oh, here we go. There's first person Skeleton. We don't want that one. We actually, I don't actually see it in here, so let's actually load in Spike really quick. Um, we can go over here to Man, and it's going to be NPC, and it's going to be, is it Spike? And is it NPC Spike? It might actually be NPC Pilgrim. I think it is, actually. Yep. And I, should, I shouldn't have uh, hit load on there with all uh, selected because now it's replaced the head. So essentially, uh, we have now have our, our base back. Okay, so let's switch back to man really quick. Let's switch back to head uh, and say we want to change this head back to um, a different one here. And uh, a key part here is that I forgot to actually show you about saving these variations. So got ahead of myself. So let's actually switch back. To here. Let's turn off the facial hair for now. Open that tattoo gun. And you'll see that 
it now loads back up. Again, little edge cases there where it didn't load. So if you want to save a variation, so we have Bruce here. If we want to slide across here and see the different ones for him, if you want to create a variation, all you have to do is say you want to go in here and create a blue-eyed variation or a gray-eyed variation for this character. At any time, you can hit this Save button up here to the right. These two buttons don't currently work but you can hit this right button and it will actually create a variation. We'll be able to see by changing the head again and then going back on this slider. And so now you can see just very slightly there uh, that the eye color is now changing to gray when we slide all the way over. So when you save that, it will actually use this variation and apply that over to the code. Um, and so you can actually play with gray eyes in the game. Let's go ahead and speed things up here and go to the hands. So we're going to need to get hands that are actually going to show in the game. So what I would recommend for the player is to actually switch over to hands player uh, and go with the hands down here at the end, the ones with the actually end hands here like that. And then do the left arm and do the right arm just like that. And then you can also add tattoos and whatnot in there as well. Um, I think that's going to be under here. You can actually apply different tattoos. Uh, and it looks like this one is actually set up on that hand itself, maybe. No, one of the other sliders is actually, maybe it's a decal that it added it. Yeah. So then from here, we can actually go in here and set any one of the different hats, helmets, uh, different armor pieces for this guy. Um, I'll go ahead and cut ahead to where, you know, to save time on this video. You guys are going to have to basically explore a lot of this yourselves to kind of find out what you like. But for example, if you want a specific piece, and I, ha I did, I was fighting a bug earlier where basically I was having some issues with saving out. I refactored the saving system, and I was having issues with actually saving specific parts of the body uh, and not getting like a bug. So, you know, please bear with me if you start to load in one of these pieces you've set something on this character and then when you go to actually play it it doesn't show up uh, but here's a concept so if you actually want to create like a variation of this mask uh, and wear this you can go here to slot 2 and set this to null and you can see here I've added a transparency layer to where you can actually see what it's disabling uh, but that actually gets our guy's face to show again we'll hit save as a variation if we switch this hat and then bring it back. You'll see here we can apply the variation. If you do that on the material, it's not going to actually save. You do need to save that as a variation first, uh, and then uh, it should save out when you uh, when you load in. Also, with enabling and disabling the different details, uh, there's currently a bug which doesn't re-enable them when you switch between the variations. Uh, so the reason it's not showing back up here is because it's disabled. Um, then, for example, if you want to go in here and add little details, you want to add a cape to this guy, you want to add anything, you want to add chest armor, whatever it may be that you want to add, you can go through and set the different variations on this guy. Uh, I can see that we've got some clipping on the backpack, so let's actually go down here to our backpack, and it looks like it's actually being set. His backpack is being set through something else. Oh, it's baked into the Pilgrim. Interesting. Okay. So let's go here and just find, we'll find a fun one. So there's our, our Aiden uh, character. Let's go here and we'll also, because there's the clipping with the hair for sanity's sake, let's go ahead and just switch to something a little less apparent here. That. And then we'll go ahead and set the hair. So if we go back to head, we'll actually turn off the back hair there so it doesn't clip through. So we'll make him bald or we'll add like a little hair right there to the front. <laughs> and one of these is actually set up to be like hat hair and so Oh, also, I just realized that we're on player. That's actually why we have less options when it comes to the hair. Uh, players have a lot less options. 
There we go. Something like that. And then if you want armor, of course, you can go in here and set whatever different armors you want. And as far as the different chess pieces and different armors that you can wear in the game, uh, you can set whatever you want uh, for, you know, if you're going for a realism build, I would recommend uh, trying to keep very thin items here because you can actually wear items over top of this. And so whatever you're setting, uh, just be warned that some of your items that you're equipping may clip improperly with these things uh, if they're not disabled properly uh, properly by that code. And so um, if you want to kind of keep things thin, that way it's easier to, uh, to see your other armor in the game. But at any point, I mean, you can essentially just uh, go in here and edit your your approach and kind of change things how you want it. Um, so let's see, like for example, I know leg armor is not a thing in the game really. And so if we want to add a little piece of leg armor and we also have the concept of like rings and gloves. So if we want to add some rings to this character like that. And then let me show you guys briefly the concept of adding the textures. So you can actually uh, add textures uh, to these items. There is the concept of custom materials in here. Uh, I have not fully gotten everything tested. And so just a heads up uh, that this is not fully tested and it does not entirely work properly to get it in the game. Uh, I did have varying amounts of success earlier, but just a heads up um, that it's a still work in progress. Uh, so say for example, we wanna go in here and actually change the color uh, of this armor. Uh, let's see if it can actually pull the gradients. Yeah, it can. So if we hit like the gradient, you can actually go in here and change the different colors of this armor. Uh, we might actually be able to find one that's darker. So if you're looking for kind of a, a darker look, ooh, that's kind of cool. So just a very quick pass to making these characters unique is just adding kind of a unique color to their armor here. So you can see some rust. I like that. All right, let's go with that one, actually. And then say we want to actually make this look a little bit more like military. Um, we can go in here and add a mask. I'm not sure how that will apply. It doesn't look like it's really applying very well with the rest of the maps. So... Um, and I have not added the ability to disable yet. So if you set one, just be aware it is going to get saved out for now. Um, but like, for example, if we want to go in here and make black armor, uh, we can. And let's see, then we set the gradient. Yeah, like that. Make it a little bit darker. Okay, so let's say that we're good, we're done with this guy. Let's go into the other features. So um, again, if you want to be able to just mix and match, you can go to any uh, different feature at any or any slot at any time uh, and hit the reroll. That will allow you to set any amount of random uh, slots. Uh, I've gotten them fairly honed in, but a lot of these do have small gotchas as far as uh, little things that have been added to certain lists that, you know, don't really belong that I need to edge case out. Um, but for the most part, it should work fairly well. Uh, once you're ready to save, uh, you go ahead and hit this save button down here. And then you're going to go here, and uh, if you set this to player and you hit reroll, it's going to automatically name it to what it needs to be named for it to work immediately in the game. So anytime you load a preset, it's actually going to try to update this name, and that's so you can overwrite presets in the game. Uh, so I'll show you here in a second. So first, we're going to go ahead and save out Aiden. Um, so let's go ahead. We don't have to worry about setting the class. Let's just go ahead and hit save you'll hear a sound that lets you know that it's successful. If we go over here to the Dying Light 2 folder, um, we hit source here, you'll see that there's a new data for. Make sure you don't have a data for. Right now I haven't set up the code to automatically, you know, find the highest number and go one step higher. Uh, so that may overwrite your data for. So please be aware when you're currently using this version. If you hit save again, you should see a data for end up in this folder. Uh, and when you load that up, you'll see that you now have a new player. Uh, let's go ahead and launch the game and I'll show you guys another feature really quick. And then we're going to call it. Um, but I'm really excited to get this out to you guys. I hope you guys have a lot of fun making the different characters. This will also create an output for each one of these. So when you're actually doing uh, this application inside of the uh, data, so inside this folder, streaming assets, output, 
there should be a dated folder. And in that folder, uh, it's creating a backup of your save as well. So whatever you just created is also being added in a JSON. I'm currently working on the ability to load in this, uh, these different builds later so that you can actually restore the different ones that you've created. But just know that as you go through and create these, if it's got the same name, it's going to overwrite it. If you want to go in here and make a bunch of different variations, you absolutely can. Uh, feel free to just have fun with that. Um, but once you go in here and launch, we should see that this guy is now loaded in. If we hit without event, we'll go ahead and load up. Let me fix the screen here. Actually, I'll, I'll leave it like this so that way it's actually zoomed in. You might be able to see a little bit better in the video. So you can see here that some things did mount, some things didn't. Um, there's specific ones uh, with this game uh, that basically it's all about how these slots are assigned. Uh, so I'm still looking into how I'm naming the slots to get these things properly started. That's why I highly encourage to just start from the uh, generic character or the base character. You can see here that this arm didn't bind to the skeleton for whatever reason. That's not a problem. It's just something that uh, you can easily adjust by going in there and changing it. And as I mentioned, you know, for the most part, for the most part, I, I will say that I'm still working on the skeletons for the NPC players. Um, if you want to replace any one of these models, so say, for example, I'm currently playing the quest uh, where you play up against Hakon, uh, or not up against, you're going through the, the whole thing where you're you're following Hakon, rather. Um, in order to be able to properly save this all you and replace Hakon, for example, all you have to do is get the proper name of the character that you're trying to replace. Uh, the easiest way to do this is, and I, it's going to be confusing, I know, because some of the naming, welcome to the suck, some of the naming uh, is a little janky uh, that just, I don't know where they changed the story over time, whatever it is. Uh, so Hakon is actually going to be NPC Abdul. Um, and so you can replace him immediately if I just go in here, change the name, and then change this from player to man. Uh, this is critical because it's going to fix the skeleton and make sure that the skeleton is correct. And then we're going to give him something like, uh, a, probably do like a peacekeeper uh, class. And this is selecting a better skeleton. So for mounting this armor to it. And then if we hit save it's going to immediately jet inject back into our file. We now have uh, this player in here. And so if we go ahead and launch the uh, application again or the game again, what we should see here is when we go back into that quest, um, we should actually see this player updated uh, with a new skin. So there's still a lot of things you can get away with uh, for the player. Uh, a lot of it's dependent on what the skeleton can mount. So I'm still looking into the different ways that you can make that a little bit more streamlined. Uh, so there's less likely to build your favorite character uh, and then you load the game and it's not actually working. Uh, so to help avoid that, I am trying to work on some policies that will help keep that uh, clean and accurate. But for now, I'm still working on that. Uh, and, it, you know, it's a point to release so all good things here in the future with new features and and lots of good stuff i hope you guys have enjoyed the video sorry it's been a little bit longer barely skimmed the surface on the amount of things you can do with this uh with this tool so i hope you enjoy uh reviewing and going through and seeing what you can get done uh i'm looking at him and i don't see him different hang on one second maybe i'm just not close enough hang on one second I really can't tell. I should have done. I should have started from the intro again. Give me one second. I'm pretty sure up here I can actually see it. But this should work unless you're replacing this model somewhere else. Based on what I'm seeing, that is the right model. Yeah. So he's replaced. Uh, it does look like that one arm uh, is just actually wrong. Uh, and so that one arm that I selected may actually not be uh, one that can properly mount to these models. And so uh, all you have to do is go back into the editor and switch that arm 
uh, and it will fix it. Once I get up there, we'll actually be able to see them. But you'll be able to see what actually mounted to the model and what didn't. Let's see if any of it's clipping. Up, oh, see, that's where the hands are, the player hands. So you can actually see them through the, through the wall. So you're going to want to also, if you're creating an NPC character, you're going to want to uh, actually go in there and, and replace most of those things with actual NPC things. So, for example, if we hit save here, because hopefully it'll save at this point. And I do need to update this editor to where you can disable the music. I apologize, it's kind of running in the background. You can always mute it using your system, but um, you can see even this uh, this uh, hood didn't properly mount, uh, and it looks like this torso didn't either. So let's actually make sure that this armor is, so it is NPC armor. Let's actually try a different one here. Uh, it's one of those things where you just got to kind of be playful and uh, expect some things might work, some things might not work. Uh, and I want to add a flag feature in the future so that you can easily let me know, you know, what loaded, what didn't load. Uh, but, oh, that's why. So uh, on the man here, left hand, that's why. So it had the player uh, index for the for the people, for the NPC players, they don't have the individually pieced together uh, pieces like that. So they actually have um, all one hand. So if we go in here, we make that change uh, and hit save. So let's go ahead and hit save again. Make sure this updated, so 720. And you can see here that it is updated. And let's go ahead and launch again. So some of this is probably just going to be a trial and error, kind of dialing things in as you go uh, to see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and feel free to let me know. Uh, right now, it's not super easy to see what index or what models uh, you've selected. Um, you can open up that uh tattoo brush down in the bottom left to see the name of the model that you've currently got selected. So if you guys want to go through and help me out by letting me know what models do and don't work with different ones, uh, that's awesome. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of identify what works and what doesn't work. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely kind of a trial and error thing. So let's see if this is any better. I don't see any hands glitching through the wall here. And there we go. So he has hands now. You can see he's got rings. Uh, and, of course, he's got the helmet. So uh, that chest piece, you know, doesn't work in in game for this one. I know there is ones that do work because in my earlier video, obviously, I put out where uh, I I got one working for my player. Uh, so it's just about finding out which models actually mount to the player and which ones don't. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the tool. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Have a great time, and I look forward to talking to you guys more about the project. Stay safe. Have fun.